So I recently put together a music video where I used three vocal tracks for the chorus. Now the chorus was constructed with a lead vocal double tracking just the chorus, and then two harmony tracks. The chorus vocals were recorded in separate takes, so I needed to line them up. So the first thing I did was to use an automated script, but after listening to the automated alignment, I decided to tighten up the vocals by also doing a manual process using Reaper's stretch markers and take markers. So I ended up with a two-step process. This is part one in a two-part video series. In this video, I'll show you how I set up and used the stretch and take markers. And in part two, I'll show you how I use the automated script and the stretch and take markers to line up the vocals. All right, so here are the three chorus tracks. The uh, track in light green is the reference track. Uh, this track is already aligned with the lead vocal and the two yellow tracks are the harmony tracks and they are not aligned with the lead vocal. You know, so the idea is we wanna line up the uh, harmony tracks with the reference track and then that'll put the chorus, you know, in alignment with the lead vocal. Now to do the manual alignment, we'll put stretch markers on the harmony tracks and take markers on the reference track. We can then use these markers to align the harmony tracks with the reference track. Now I found it was much more convenient to set up and use keyboard shortcuts rather than selecting menu items, you know, for the marker actions. It was just a whole lot easier. So let's add the shortcuts for the take markers. So to add shortcuts in Reaper, we go to actions show action list and here in filter we're going to say take marker and the take marker actions show up uh, now here you'll notice there's an option to do add edit take marker at mouse position or add edit take marker at play position or edit cursor now I found um, using the mouse position um, option didn't work out so well because sometimes I would place the mouse, but then the mouse would wander and I would end up adding the marker in a place where I really didn't want to add the marker. So I found um, I had much more control, better placement by using the add edit take marker at play position or edit cursor. So we'll choose that one. Click on here and do an add. Try it keyboard combo all right so reaper's cool right it'll tell you if your combo is already used and um you know i never override these things because i don't want to override defaults that reaper has has already set up so you may need to play around a little bit before you find a uh, a shortcut that that works so I was able to find and use alt comma for the add and then for delete take marker at cursor. I was able to find alt period. And then I also did this one delete all take markers and that's basically you select the track and then you'll, you'll Reaper will delete all the take markers that are in that track. So for delete all take markers, I used alt backslash. Yeah, and there you go. All three are set up. And this turned out to be kind of a convenient keyboard combination because these, you know, three, three keyboard shortcuts are all in the lower right-hand corner of my keyboard. So that was kind of convenient to have them kind of clustered together. So I'll show you how this works. So we position the cursor there, add a take marker, put on a label. Okay. All right, so the marker is not exactly where I want it to be, so I can just move it to the beginning. 
say I want to add one here. Uh, same thing, it's not quite where I wanted it, so I can move it around and add it right to the beginning. So, uh, so they look good. So this is where I would you know, want to place the uh, take markers for doing the, uh, the alignment. Um, so we'll get rid of these now. For that, I'll do my alt slash, select the take, do alt slash, and voila. All right, so now let's set up the uh, stretch markers. So again, we go to actions, show action list, and this time we want to type in stretch marker. All right, the stretch marker items show up. Now I noticed that Reaper had already defaulted the add stretch marker at cursor on Shift W. Yeah, I also noticed that they put the default on adding at the cursor as opposed to adding at the mouse position. So yeah, it's just easier. So we also want to this one, we move stretch marker at current position. For that one, in my installation, uh, shift D was available. If you're D, delete, remove, shift D. And then I also did this one, this remove all stretch markers, same kind of thing. Yeah, select the track, and then all the stretch markers on the track you know, will be deleted. Do the add. And for that one, I did Shift A, which was available. So there you go. Shortcuts for stretch markers are all set up. And again, the Shift A, W, and D are all kind of clustered together in the upper left-hand corner of my keyboard, which again, it turned out to be kind of convenient. So. I'll be working the stretch markers in the upper left hand corner, keyboard shortcuts, and I'll be working the take markers in the lower right hand corner. For the take markers, I'm using Alt and a key, and for the stretch markers, I'm using Shift and a key. So that just kind of made it kind of, you know, easier to remember and uh, easier to use. So let's go ahead and set up a stretch marker. Say I want to set up a stretch marker at the beginning of this waveform. So do a shift W. I didn't position it very well, so I want to move it to the beginning. However, when you move a stretch marker, you end up moving the waveform. So that's not what I want to do. I just want to reposition the stretch marker without moving the waveform. So let's uh, undo that. Now the way that you can do that is uh, by setting up something called a mouse modifier. So I will show you how to set up a mouse modifier. Let's get rid of that uh, stretch marker. Now to set up a, uh, a mouse modifier, you go to options, go to preferences, Go to editing behavior and mouse modify. And then you get this display window for context. You want to set up media item stretch marker. That brings up all these keyboard shortcuts. This we want to keep at left drag. Now I've already set up my mouse modifier and I'm on a Windows platform, so you know it defaults to all these window keyboard shortcuts. If you're on a Mac, it'll default to your Mac available keyboard shortcuts. So I'll just walk through, I mean, how you set this up. You, you know, select the keyboard shortcut you want to use. I chose Control Win. You double click it. And then you want to select this one, this stretch, move stretch marker, preserving all rates, rate envelope mode. 
and then you want to select ignoring selection grouping and then that'll put that command right here on your um, the control key you chose again you double click it move stretch marker preserving all rates rate envelope mode ignoring selection group and so there you go the stretch marker is then set up hit okay so let's try that again see i want to put a stretch marker there i'm going to use shift w i want to reposition it yeah so the way the mouse modifier works is you want to hold down the control and window key and then grab the marker and now you can move it all around and you know no problem no stretching so you want to hold it hold the keyboard you want to position it and release the keys and now it's just say i think i want to move it a little even more to the left so hold down the keyboard again control my control win move it over just a little bit and so yeah so now i got it in the spot where well, it's as perfect as I can get it. And that's where I'd like to uh, keep it. So that's why you need to set up a mouse modifier because you'll need to move stretch markers around and uh, you don't want to alter the waveform as you're repositioning um, stretch markers. All right, so that's uh, adding shortcuts for take markers and stretch markers. Uh, got one more um, setup tip. This is just kind of an FYI. Go back to setting up a, a take marker. Put on a label. Now, the first time that I set this up, I was using Reaper's defaults. And they had defaulted this to some kind of mellow yellow color. And the font size was 10. So it was very hard to see and very hard to read. It was like kind of tiny in the uh, in the timeline here. So the way to change the font color and the uh, font size, well, again, you go to actions for that, show action list. And this time you want to filter on theme. Filter on theme and then all the way down at the bottom, you'll find theme development show theme tweak configuration window so you double click it now for, for the uh, for the marker color you want to filter on marker and then here it is media item take mark just click on it and you can set the color i set it to black you know it was set to like a very light yellow, which I didn't want. So, you know, I still want to keep it at black, so I'll just cancel out of this. And for the font size, go back to filter, filter on font. Go down to the bottom, double click on media item font label. So I changed the font to be this Microsoft. Jenga Hay, maybe. Bold, and I did font size 12 because, you know, that, that font you know, is kind of easier to see, and 12 is, you know, large enough to see as well. So I don't want to change that. So that's how you can customize color and font size of the uh, take mark. So that's it for setting up the take and, uh, and stretch mark. Now, needless to say, the manual technique can be a bit tedious, but you do have some control over it by increasing or decreasing the number of alignment points that uh, you want to deal with. And setting up these keyboard shortcuts, you know, made the tedious process you know, just a lot more manageable. So in part two, I'll show you how I line up the vocals. I'll walk through doing the automated alignment, and then I'll follow that up with doing the manual line. So please comment, like, subscribe, and with that, we'll see you next time. Love is a rose, better not pick it. Only grows when it's on the vine. Handful of thorns, no, you missed it. 
Lose your love when you say the word mine.